A few months ago, I gave Laravel a shot for the first time, and it didn't go great for me. I had a bit of a rough time trying to set it up and get it working how I expected, and it just didn't meet my DX expectations as a React full stack dev. Thankfully, they listened, and they made a lot of really cool changes, none of which are what we're here to talk about today. What I'm here to chat about is the most recent release for inertia. You might be asking, what is inertia? It's a router. Why do we care as JS devs, though? There's a reason. Inertia was the highlight of my experience trying out Laravel. It actually is one of the best routers for React. Yes, you heard that right. Inertia is a router for React apps that lets you host them on platforms like Laravel or even other frameworks like Phoenix and Elixir. It was cool as is, but it was missing enough things that it wasn't the easiest recommendation. But the DX, the ergonomics, and all the parts were kind of coming together. They're no longer just coming together. They're here. Inertia 2.0 is a huge change for Inertia, and it's honestly kind of feeling like Laravel is now one of the best React frameworks, as crazy as that might sound. Hear me out right after a quick break from today's sponsor. Posthog, I'm legit so hyped these guys are sponsors. I've been using them as my analytics for years now, way before they ever were down to sponsor. I kept pestering them until they agreed. And I don't just use them like here and there. I use it for literally all of my projects. If it has revenue and it faces users, it's either on post hog or I regret not putting it on post hog. And it's not like it costs a whole lot of money either. Their free tier is so generous that more than 90% of users are on it and are totally fine. And it's not a monthly cost. They charge you based on usage exclusively. And the usage costs are super tiny too. And this is just one of their products because by the way, they're not just product analytics. They're an all-in-one suite of product tools. Everything you need from web analytics and session replay, feature flies, experiments, and honestly, one of the most underrated for sure, surveys. Super, super awesome product. I couldn't be happier with it. And I'm so pumped they were down to sponsor. Thanks again to Postdoc for sponsoring. Check them out today at soydev.link slash postdoc and make sure to tell them that Theo sent you. Inertia 2.0, redefining front-end dev for Laravel. We're excited to announce the stable release of Inertia 2.0, bringing significant improvements in how you build software with Laravel. The release is part of our continued investment in making the front-end dev experience with Laravel as productive and enjoyable as possible. They create Inertia so back-end devs can easily use popular front-end frameworks like React, Vue, and Svelte without needing to build an API. This is cool. You'll understand in a minute. Inertia acts as a bridge between your server-side apps and your JS front-end, which enables you to build single-page apps while still enjoying Laravel's robust server-side routing and ORM. 2.0's big change is that they rewrote the request handling layer entirely. Before you can understand all this mumbo jumbo and why it's cool, we should understand a bit more about how Inertia actually works. Inertia lets you write a controller in PHP that does something. In this case, we have our user controller function. Users is user active. So this is coming from our ORM. We order it by name, and then we get the ID name and email. Here's where it's fun. Return Inertia render users pass it this data, users is the users we defined here. And now if we go into the view code, we define props in our users.view file to have this array as the data being passed to it. And we just have the data here now. Because what's happening is the Laravel server is responding to a request to the users page with this controller. And inertia doesn't send HTML or JSON, inertia takes the component that you specified here and renders that and returns the result instead. So it can server render it so you get HTML or it can client render it still too. You have all the things, all the options and customization you'd expect. But the coolest part is that it lets you pass props from PHP to your JavaScript without having to build an API to do all the back and forth. That back and forth is a huge part of why frameworks like Next are so powerful. But if your framework has it like Inertia plus Laravel, the need for a TypeScript backend in the same project goes down a lot because that friction is reduced so much. And I like, like if you're going to be one of those people who insists on continuing to build with these types of tools, but also use React, why are you still building a REST API? Just use something like this. It's so much better. And it makes things like the Rails world feel hilariously antiquated because it's so much better. And of course, there are mutations as well. Just for an example, this was the thing that blew my mind when I tried it out for the first time. Here we have a form in React. Function, handle changes, handle submit, all just vanilla React stuff. On submit, handle submit, we post to users with the values that we stored in state. So when we submit the form, this store function gets called and it creates a new user with all of this data, but then it returns to route users.index. 
it returns you to this user's page when you're done because you can specify in a post request on the server what the client should do after. And it will actually respond with the data for that next page. The ability to revalidate and change the experience the user's having from the server side like that, so good. So this is the CRM app demo that they have on their website written in React. This is still gonna be using Inertia 1. We'll get to 2 in just a second, but I need to make sure you guys understand why this is so cool. There's way too much stuff in this. But if we go to users create, we have the use form hook, which by the way, comes from inertia. They have their own form primitives, which is dope. And the on submit posts to route users.store. I don't think it's smart enough for me to command click from here to the PHP. It might be with their new Laravel PHP like VS Code extension, but I'm not running that right now. So we're gonna hop over to the user controller. Anyways, I don't have this environment set up, which is why we're getting all these errors. So ignore those. The thing I wanted to show here is in the create function, you can respond by rendering the create page. And if we go to the store function, we store after validating their request, it has a photo, we update the photo, and then we redirect them to this route, which means by doing nothing on the client at all, we literally just have to post to this route, the page now updates. There is no code that is do this post, then navigate to that page. The server side code does the store and then returns a redirect. This is great. The back end should be the thing determining what the front end does when the back end gets something submitted from the front end. This is how full stack dev is supposed to work. The front end shouldn't hit the back end, get something, and then decide what to do with it. The front end should be told by the back end what to do after a change occurs. This had a problem though. Inertia was focused a little too much on the back end interrupting the front end and telling it, no, you go here now. There's a lot of flows that doesn't work flow, like a live chat widget or something that needs to be pulled. If it's going to re-render the whole page or redirect you when something changes, that's no good. It also like, I had no idea how to set up infinite scroll with something like this. It just wasn't viable under this model. That's why 2.0 is such a great release. I want to look at these examples before we go any further. Let's see how polling looks now. Use poll from Inertia.js React. Use poll number. Polling your server for new information on the current page is common. So Inertia provides a poll helper to help reduce the amount of boilerplate code. It will also stop polling when the page is unmounted. But you have an optional argument with an object where you can give it a custom start or finish function. Can you tell it which props you do and don't want to revalidate? Because I know you can on some other things. Oh, it also returns a stop and start so you can trigger it to start and stop the polling. That's cool. Oh, it's all the router reload options. Okay, cool. Because router reload lets you manually pick which things should or shouldn't be revalidated, which is really, really helpful if you only want to fetch like one prop and have that update. I, they should have put an example with that here so you can see that that's a thing. This is too small a thing for how big of a functionality it is. Anyways, that's just one of the cool new things. We also have prefetching, deferred props, infinite scroll, and lazy loading. Prefetch is so cool. By default, Inertia will prefetch the data for the page when the user hovers over the link after more than 75 milliseconds. The data is cached for 30 seconds before being evicted. You can customize the behavior with a cache for on the link. That's so cool that you can give it that level of specificity in the caching. I, I sense some potential chaos with people putting different cache four times all over the place and then you get weird unintuitive behaviors, but that level of control is really nice. Interesting, you can also pass a click to it. So if you start clicking, it will start prefetching as soon as you start the click. So you don't have to wait for on mouse up, which is effectively how clicks work. When you do on click, it doesn't trigger till you let go. This will start fetching the data before you let go. So you get it a little bit faster. Also, you can mount the prefetch, which means it will always prefetch even if the user doesn't do anything. Ooh, this is cool. You can combine strats too. That's I haven't seen anyone else do this. That's really nice. You can pass prefetch an array. Next JS, I hope you're taking notes programmatic prefetching where you can manually prefetch by calling router up prefetch. Yes, that's so good. So good. And it lets you fetch data for page two. So now when you load the page, you can automatically load data for the page before and after. So when you click next, it's immediate. That's really good. And obviously they provide a hook too. Whew. So cool. And even a flush all so you can get rid of all the cache shit. Oh, that the, for something like logged out state, this is incredible because when you log out, you want all the old cache to be evicted so you can't navigate to fake signed in pages anymore. This is so good. So good. They even got SWR. Okay. Very interesting. You can specify how long it should be considered fresh for as well as how long you can see it before the data is considered invalid. Really good stuff. 
deferred props. Oh, this most React devs don't even have access to this right now. Imagine you have something in your back end that's fast, like the user data, and you want to get that to them immediately so that you can see your little like top nav on the site. But you also have something that takes longer, like a report you're generating. The way you would do this old school is you'd have everything render on the client and you do two API calls, one to go get the user data, one to get the chart. This all has to happen after the page loads. You can fire those requests off. So you have the huge penalty at the start. You have to see a loading state before the user icon comes in. And chances are you don't even start the fetch for the chart until you know the user is signed in. So you're making multiple network requests all blocking each other, taking forever. If you can defer the promise, you now have the ability to send the rest later. You can have the first response include the user data so you have the top nav and all those things and have a loading state as the rest is being generated all from one request, usually being streamed. Remix has had this for a while where you can import defer and when you return something in the loader, which is how you get data from the server to the client in Remix, you can wrap something with defer and now this promise can be passed down as a promise and now on the client side, you can wait for it and load different states while you're waiting. Did not expect to see inertia with this, which is really cool. What we see here is when we render this page, we give it all the users and all the roles. But since permissions takes longer, supposedly, this gets wrapped with inertia defer, and then we respond with permissions all. So now this part can come in later. This lets you group all of the things, but you can still fetch data in parallel by grouping props together. Yeah, super cool that you can defer things like this. And on the client, what this looks like, it's similar to suspense where you have a suspense component with a fallback, and then whenever its children are done, they're done. But it's it's kind of inversed here, where deferred data equals permissions. Since this isn't an actual TypeScript object, they're using string keys for these things, which makes sense. I don't think it has a type safety story, sadly, but that's the, the one catch here. And you have the fallback loading div. So while we wait for this promise to resolve as part of the stream, we can show the fallback state. Huge. Game changer. Super cool. I'm pretty sure this is the only non- TypeScript framework that has defer. Chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but is there another another tool that handles the backended front end that lets you defer some of the data from the server to the client like this? Even things like Live View and Elixir kind of struggle with this. You have to build your own solution if you want to send some data after. And I know they're actually working on some of the streaming stuff that I showed Jose and Chris McCord at ElixirConf because of how powerful this model is. I did not expect inertia to beat them to it but it's really cool to see. I know LiveView has async, but it doesn't have a concept of responding with some things immediately and then some things later. I just made this super beautiful mock app really fast. The goal here is to show what I'm referring to. Let's say this user profile icon takes a little bit of time to load. So let's say this top nav needs some user data. We'll make a fake async function, get user data. We'll await I'll make a fake uh, async function, wait for, cool. So here we're getting this fake user data. We'll await in the top nav. And now when I load this page, I'm gonna hit the refresh now. One Mississippi, then it loads. If I pull up the network tab, you'll see, we wait, we wait, and then it all comes in. And this load here takes almost just a little bit more than a second because of that, that one second delay. But what happens if in the page content, if I, async function main content swap that over nothing changes because both of those are firing at the same time so it's still going to take the same one second because those are going in parallel but let's say this one the main content wasn't that fast we'll await wait for five thousand that's gonna take five seconds now when i load this page you see the little loading state there Three, four, five. The whole page takes as long as the slowest piece of content on it. So now that we have something that takes five seconds, we don't get any response until that part is done. What we used to do is we would just not render that part on the server. We would have an API you hit, and then the API would send the response after the page loads, runs the JavaScript, determines it needs the data, and then fetches. What if we didn't have to do that? What if... I could just wrap this with a loading state. And now we get back the part that's faster immediately. And we get the pack the part that's slower when it's ready. Now I'll load the page again. The one second still takes its time. 
then the content comes in. That's the magic here. When you have the ability to defer, you can now prevent yourself from blocking for anywhere near as long as you otherwise might have had to, which sucks for users. If one API on your page is slow, the whole page gets slowed down. Now you can take the slow parts and wrap them. And if you wanted, you could even wrap the user icon because that's the part that we want the data for, I'm assuming. So async function user menu. I don't know what the fuck that just did. Uh, I was going to take the icon from here. So we'll just yoink this guy, paste that there, put the user menu here instead, kill that, delete that. Now the user menu is being fetched by top nav. We're still going to see that one second load time, but if I wrap this in suspense, I'll even not put a fallback state here. And it'll look fine. See, now when I refresh, it's instantaneous. We get that when it's ready, and we get the rest when it's ready right after. So good. So good. This makes things way easier than they used to be to do these types of complex loading behaviors and patterns. And now the user, when they click something and they navigate, they'll get to see it immediately, even if the data is going to take more time. Server-side defer is a magical pattern, and it's so cool seeing it reach frameworks that aren't even JavaScript frameworks. Okay, apparently, you can kind of do this with Live View, where you can immediately assign a value and then async assign other values. Cool that it allows that. Yeah, relatively similar. Wait, so that, that weird bug I had in the the one at five stacks video, if I had moved that to assign async, would that have just worked? Because I had to do a bunch of workarounds. I, I need to dive into live view more. I've mostly avoided it because I'm React brained. And that's why I like inertia because I can use React with inertia. You can even specify multiple things that it waits for here. It's so cool. It's so cool. Awesome to see this pattern catching on. Ooh, there's also the ability to merge props now. So if you're doing pagination, you can combine the previous response with the new one. If you use merge and the prop returns an array, it'll append the response to the current prop value. If it's an object, it'll merge the response to the current prop value. That's really cool. Interesting. You can defer it and then mark it as mergeable after two. Very fancy. Is that... Oh, uh, no, that's... Uh, no, that, that is the infinite scroll page. Yeah. Infinite scroll is just the merging props thing. That makes sense. Because I can see how this makes infinite scroll way easier. You just have get give you more. That's dope. And of course, load when visible. This is actually really cool. You can have a component when visible. So when you scroll to a section of the page, if you don't want to fire off an expensive query until you get somewhere, when visible means now when this component is shown, then we're going to trigger the call to get that data. Otherwise, we're going to show a loading state. That's so cool. There's even a buffer if you want to preload. So even when it's not visible, you can put in a buffer and it will. This is a really good pattern. There are a lot of things here for us to learn about. And I've been saying this. I even told like the next team to check out Inertia and see some of these patterns because there's really cool stuff here that we can all learn from. And if any other language framework or community wants React devs to start working with them and use their stuff, they should take a close look at Inertia because Inertia is no longer just the way to use React with Laravel. Inertia is one of the best ways to bridge the backend and frontend gaps, regardless of which backend and frontend frameworks you happen to choose. It's a really cool project. Huge shout out to everybody who's been working on it. I'm excited to see what Inertia 2.0 enables and how it impacts the web dev industry as a whole. Realistically speaking, our frontends should know more about our backends, and our backends should care more about our frontends. And without tools like Inertia, that's never going to end up happening. Thank you as always, and until next time, peace nerds.